Hello everybody, welcome to my garage. I'm Andrew Day. First of all, I'd like to say hi to all the DBS chums out there. And also, I'd like to thank those of you who've subscribed to my channel and for clicking the like button on my previous videos. Today we're talking about badge engineering. Now it's a bit of a cryptic title. We're not talking about the kind of badge engineering that uh, British Leyland, or as they were in the 60s, BMC, was so famous for, where they took one car, like the uh, codenamed ADO 16, and turned it into not only the Austin 1100 1300. I'm gonna give you a damn good thrashing! But also into five other brands. Can you remember what they were? There was also the Morris, the MG, there was the Riley, the Wolseley, and as well, for added luxury and comfort, the Vandamme Pla. No, we're not talking about that. We're talking about the badges of my Aston Martin DBS. This is one of the originals. There's two, of course, one front, one rear. And if I show you this to you close up, you can see that the badge is damaged. The enamel has cracked here and here and has actually fallen out on this side and there are two slight depressions, and that's what caused the enamel to break and fall out. And you may be tempted to think, well, it's an old car, these are old badges, they've been bashed about a bit, it's had a hard life, but no, that's not the reason this badge is damaged. It's damaged because of inherent bad design. And I make it my mission with this car to see if I can actually improve uh, design where it could be better. And so I bought new badges and they are very expensive from Aston Martin, of course, and they are identical to the original. And that is the problem. Why these broke down is because the badge is hollow. There's nothing on the back there. And what happened is where you attach it to the car, these two threaded bars and tighten up the nuts, as you tighten up those nuts, and add preload, if not immediately, over time, the tension pulling down at the surface from these threaded bars actually deforms the surface and causes the enamel to break. Not only does it damage the badge, but also it damages your paintwork because the edge of the badge presses into your paintwork and creates an impression in the shape of the badge, damaging your paintwork. So I bought brand new badges. What could I do to improve the design of the badge? And what I've done is I have filled the badge with body filler. And today I'm going to show you how I did that. So the first thing I'm going to do is protect the paintwork. I'm going to use this foil tape, which will not only, actually I think I'm just going to reduce the tackiness first of all there we go as I was saying the foil tape will not only protect the paintwork from the body filler sticking to it but also any heat generated by it but you can also use regular tape just as I'm using here once you've covered the area with tape Get your badge, push it through the holes so that you can attach the badge when you've filled it with the filler. Get your pot of all-purpose grease, smear it over the work area, and this will act as a release agent. Once you've done that, get your new badge and cover that with masking tape. Press it firmly all around the edges. Once it's all pressed down, get yourself a craft knife and trim off the edges. I really should have worn a leather glove during this process, so remember, safety first. Just trim carefully all around the badge. And when you've gone all the way around, press down the edges to make sure that it's firmly attached all the way around. Once you've done the front, turn it over and it's time to protect the threaded bars to stop any filler from getting into those threads. Little bit of tape wrapped around the bars. 
that's made the threaded bars just that little bit thicker. So double check that the badge still presses through the tape uh, in the holes on the boot there. Now it's time for to mix up from filler. I've got some chemical metal here. Get a good old dollop onto the mixing board. A little bit of hardener. Once that's all mixed up, time to get it into all the nooks and crannies of the badge. Now I don't want a huge excess of filler on the badge and have it all squidging out all over the place. I'm just going to try to get the perfect amount so that I have a, just a very slight excess when I present it up to the car. Press it through the holes and firmly into position. Back to the mixing board and scrape up the leftovers. And I'm going to put that on a paper towel so that I can tell when the paste has started to go off. And of course, clean up your mixing board. A few minutes later, when that started to go off, it's time to remove the badge from the car. Get a fine filler knife and pair it away. Now I have to say that's not the most perfect result I was hoping for. There seems to be a little bit of an excess, so I'm going to trim that down with the knife. And again, I should have worn leather gloves for this job, so please do take care. Spend some time just making sure that the badge now fits perfectly against the body of the car. And when it's all trimmed down, then you'll be able to get the masking tape off. And that's pretty much it. When it comes time to fit the badge back onto the car, you're going to have to be very careful not to lose either the nut or the washer inside the frame of the boot. If you lose the washer or the nut inside the frame of the boot, you will never ever be able to get it out. And it will forever haunt you as every time you lift the boot, it'll diddle -a -a -a, rattle down to the bottom of the frame. And every time you close the boot, diddle -a -a -a, it'll rattle to this end of the boot. So get the boot lid horizontal. Take the nut, uh, incidentally, in case you didn't know this already, this nut size is 2BA. It's not metric, it's not uh, British Standard or UNF, it's neither of those, it's 2BA. And you have to have a 2BA socket. There's no other way of doing it, you have to have it. I found this one on eBay. Pop the nut inside the socket and then so as not to lose the washer get your trusty pot of grease get a good dob of grease on the end of a paintbrush and paint grease all over big dob onto the nut and the socket that's it loads of grease and this will temporarily stick the washer onto, there we go, onto the nut. Now with that in place, you're ready to just put the socket into the hole. And there we go, up she goes. And I'm located. Voila. Before you take the socket away, just make sure that it is actually holding onto the threaded bar and it is. Eventually you can do that up. Hey presto. When you take it off again, be very, very careful not to lose the washer if there is a washer in there. 
So I'm going to wait till that's it. Take out, take off the badge and carefully, 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 so as not to lose that washer. There we are. And there's the washer. Now I've also used this technique in other places on the car and I used it here to create a perfect seal between the light cluster and the body. And the problem was there's a kind of curvature to the uh, light cluster and I didn't fancy trying to straighten that so the body didn't have the same matching curve and there was a gap and the uh, rubber gasket wasn't enough to fill that gap. So what I did was kind of same technique, covered the body in masking tape and then gave it a coating of grease, gave this a coating of grease, put body filler all over it, squeezed it up against the body and held it there until it gone off and that then created a glass fibre fillet which you can see just here underneath the rubber gasket there in black and that now creates a perfect airtight seal with the body and the light cluster. I also used it on the door mirrors. I noticed that the bottom of the base of the door mirror has a completely different radius profile to that of the scallop in the door. And if you try and fix it on, even with the rubber gasket, you're never going to get a perfect rock solid fit. It's always going to wobble. So what I did, cover that in masking tape, cover that in grease, put grease all over the base of the mirror, covered that base in glass fibre and created this glass fibre fillet. And here you can see, hopefully, the difference in the profile. Here the very small radius profile of the base of the mirror and the much larger radius of the door. And I fit that on. We've just got a, a black fillet there. And that now makes a totally rock solid base for the mirror. You can still use the rubber gasket like so and with a little bit of careful fitting to get the lip over the edge of the fillet absolutely rock solid base well i hope you found that interesting and helpful i've got more ideas for videos but at the moment they're all in a queue now when i said queue i didn't mean ah there you are 006 and a half now then, this is all very well, but it's not going to get you away from an enemy agent. Now, I'm thinking rocket launchers or possibly a poisonous smoke cloud. I think you find poisonous fumes are pretty standard with this car, but I've got a catalytic converter for that. Don't be ridiculous. What's this? Don't touch that. Why not? That's my lunch. Sorry about that, folks. So, don't forget to hit like and subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you again in the next one. Bye for now.